Hey everybody, welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Book Channel. I'm Matt. Uh, today we're doing the, uh, I guess, April wrap-up and May to be read. Before we get started, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing if you guys like this content. Uh, also, comment down below. Let me know what you guys are reading. I'm, I'm always interested to see uh, if there's anything I missed or cool stuff that I just overlooked. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get to it. So... I kind of picked these up, these couple of issues. Uh, it is the comic Berserker. I'm a little late on it. Of course, these are, you know, I guess Berserker 2 came out a couple weeks ago, but Berserker 1's been out for about a month or so, um, a little over. Um, and I got to say, if you look at the cover, you might know what this is. This is the Keanu Reeves, like, barbarian book um, that, that he was promoting. I guess they did, like, uh, a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo or something uh for like a bunch of different covers of this to kind of promote it uh but this is just the you know bare bones one that you find at the comic book store uh like i said i got one and two of those uh because I, I was waiting on this one to kind of see if it was just hype or what but uh i heard it was good so i picked it up um and this is right up my alley if you kind of if you like uh barbarian stories like conan or you know uh other stuff like that like kind of old school just violence uh, ultra violence we'll call it it's like it's like john wick if he was in uh you know the uh the the bc era you know and uh at least the first one is so the first one is very much like him murdering a bunch of people and just killing and stuff and then we get kind of like a backstory that kind of starts in issue two where you see uh you know he he was a barbarian who kind of got brought to our he got like you know something happened he got powers or whatever of living forever he you know and now we're, we're cut we cut to like our time period or maybe in the future a bit and now he's you know he works for the government kind of thing as like an assassin so it's a little bit more than just conan you know i like i kind of appreciated that um it was very interesting i enjoyed it a lot um, I know it had a lot of hype and a lot of negative hype too because of how much it used those Indiegogo campaigns and stuff. But uh, for as far as like a book, I thought it was fantastic. Like, you know, just fun all around. It wasn't like, you know, groundbreaking or like, you know, life changing or something, but it was fun, especially if you like those kind of uh, barbarian or uh, violent kind of uh, stories like that. Like, a, adventure story or something but um i enjoyed it a lot and obviously you know the guy's model left Ke after keanu reeves as you can tell <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna give this one uh out of five uh we'll give one and two because i enjoyed them both about equally um i'm gonna give them both about a four as far as like enjoyability in reading the next one i read was alien number two uh this is the new marvel series that's coming out um it is the first one was a bit slow but it was good it's written by philip kennedy johnson um art by salvador la roca um and i would say the art is kind of the thing i don't like the most about this uh the art is just kind of like a new kind of digital style it's not my favorite it's not bad by any means it's just uh not like uh it doesn't really say anything to me it's serviceable it does a good job of telling what's going on on the page but it's not like amazing or anything uh as far as memorable for me but you, your mileage might vary but what's really cool about this uh comic is the story's really good so so far i mean it's giving you what you want uh the first issue was a bit of setup which was a little slow but you expect that with the first issue this one is more of the payoff so we're getting more um stuff happening in this one the uh the head this guy he's like a security force that just retired from wayland yutani and then it turns out like his son stole his badge to go to wayland yutani's special facility in space where they hide the aliens and stuff and do science experiments so the wayland yutani company's like hey you know get up what you know you gave your son this card he's like no i didn't so then he's like you know what i'll go get my son on the ship you just send me with a couple of your guys and we'll go there and so you know it's going to turn out bad for you know most people and whatnot it's just a matter of who's going to die who's going to live is Waylon yutani going to backstab him or other people probably obviously but it definitely is starting to pay off as far as the story you get aliens you get murder you get you know graphic 
killing with alien and all that stuff so uh good stuff so far i'm enjoying it um i'm gonna give that one uh like a 3.5 it was solid i you know i'm gonna still buy it and everything so the next one i read is the sumerian iron shadows in the moon so this is a story i don't really think i've ever read before in a conan comic if i did it was probably uh just like a, oh uh, a while ago if 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 anything but uh this one's written and drawn by uh virginie augustine i think that's how you say their name um and this is like i said every time i, I review these the sumerian is basically conan but the uh not fully licensed or they don't have the complete license to the his stories so uh they got to call him the sumerian instead of conan and but this one, as it always says on the top, is Robert E. Howard's Savage Hero Uncensored. So these are proving to be uh, way better than the Marvel stuff, at least more fun every week. Uh, I'm not always sure if it's going to be fantastic when a new one starts, but I really liked the uh, Frost Giant's Daughter series that uh, just ended from them. That was the last one they did. And then this one kind of picked up with that. I like the idea of, you know, one creator doing a book of their own kind of like telling it their own way doing their own art and just kind of having a good time with conan it seems like that's the best way to do it because of a couple of their other ones uh before this it seemed like they had teams and it was they weren't i don't know the writers weren't always that strong the art was always fairly good like you know it'd be a different take on the art like it'd be more anime or manga style uh which is interesting for conan but um or dif different at least and uh uh, I was always uh, okay with the art being different and whatnot, but the writing was always like the weak point. So I I figured, or I found that these uh, these ones that have been written by like one single person and drawn by one single person uh, have been better. And so this one was among that ilk. Had a fun time reading this. It was a good, solid story. Uh, and uh, yeah, art was great. Conan does some awesome Conaning. And you know, with him, it's the same story every time. It's, what's going on there's a monster there's a girl who needs saving or something we run from something into a darker worse something you know so like uh this one i believe is uh he runs uh, he's saving this girl from uh, a guy who's like her slave master i guess and uh she like after he kills the her slave master um He's like, you can come with me or don't, either one, whatever you want. But she's in the middle of nowhere. She's like, I'll come with you. And then he ends up taking her to some like uh, forbidden, you know, uh, like, I guess it'd be like a, a cursed castle or temple. Uh, and there's a bunch of mummies and stuff there. And like, they're going to spend the night and obviously bad stuff's going to happen. So, so, but that's where kind of we left off. So fun issue it was good uh, i highly recommend this series because i really want people to read it i want people to buy it especially if you like conan uh or you want to get into conan this is like a good stuff to start off with um uh, more than the marvel stuff the marvel stuff is kind of like watered down conan it's fine if you're like a kid or whatever it's okay and i still buy it because i enjoy you know reading all conan but you know the marvel stuff isn't as cool as the stuff i think so this is more of the edge edgy stuff so uh this one i'm gonna give a 3.5 it was pretty solid uh you know it's the beginning of the story so there's always like the setup and everything so the last uh physical issue i read uh was this x-men legends number two this uh for all you who don't know is i guess in the 90s the creators had stories that got rejected or whatnot uh and now marvel is like oh we you know let's bring those back and um you know have some of those older writers uh read you know fill in those those story arcs that they wanted to do and now these are going to be in continuity so uh so they'll say like in the book you know this takes place between issues uh x-men 147 and 152 or something so you know where it stands in continuity um and apparently it is actually in continuity now so uh this one is by uh Nisiza? Ni Misia? No, no. Nice, nice easy. I'm sorry, I pronounced it terrible. And uh, Booth are the, is the art on this. The art is fucking fantastic on these. I really enjoy them. Uh, they take me straight back to like me being a kid reading X Men in the '90s. So, uh, you know, as you can see on there, you got X Men or uh, uh, Cy uh, Cyclops and his like you know strappy 
pouchy, awesome 90s get up and then you know we have a bunch of the other same kind of looking characters so but this is basically like a, a summer's brothers story uh this is actually the the complete like two issue arc and then i guess the series is going to take other creators uh and you know issue three is going to be by someone else and it's going to be their story that they wanted to tell and then maybe issue five and six or something will be some other story uh, or some other creator that wanted to tell their story so um but apparently they're all in you know uh, uh continuity now so um this was like i said uh like a summer's brother story so it's about cyclops and his brother havoc and their third brother adam which they didn't know about and it's about them finding out about him and his whole origin and everything so uh apparently this was like a story arc that was gonna happen but didn't and uh now it's part of continuity i guess so uh it's a fun story i enjoyed it i didn't follow everything because <laughs> i couldn't remember it's been a long time since i've read those uh, x-men comics uh, but I, I didn't really have a hard time following it too much. Like I knew who the Shi'ar were, were and I knew who all the other X-Men were. So it was pretty much just like dropped me into the middle of this storyline. And then I followed it and I was like, oh, okay. Like it, it, was, it was not too bad. There was some stuff I was like, I don't remember what's going on there, but uh, you don't need to know everything. It was still fun. And I had a blast reading it. So this one, I'm going to give a four. I had a really good time kind of like remembering my childhood with it so i read uh digitally a couple other things uh first off we have two moons number three and that one probably one of my favorite comics that i read this time um two moons is a story about a, a native american during the time of the civil war uh who is fighting for the north and then like uh his heritage starts coming up that he didn't really know about because he was kind of raised by whites i believe um and so his native american heritage uh starts kind of haunting him like he's having dreams and uh and whatnot of of like uh you know uh people from his past that he didn't know that were part of his tribe and everything and uh basically find out he he has the ability in this issue we find out he's got the ability to see like these evil like demon spirits and uh it's pretty interesting this one was the first issue that i was actually like yes this is fucking awesome the, the other two issues for one was good but it was a little setup and then two was more setup and then this issue was like yes we're paying off on all that setup so uh this one was more horrific it was more of a horror story uh, and it was a lot of fun so i enjoyed this one a lot uh two moons number three i'm gonna give it a four the next one i read was called shadow doctor number three uh this one if you don't remember was the true story based on i guess the writer's great grandpa who was a doctor a black doctor in uh in the time of Al Capone and like the, the prohibition era. Um, and so this is about uh, how his great grandpa ended up kind of working for Al Capone and the mob, uh, uh, you know, on accident, but like mainly because he couldn't get a practice as, like a, an upstanding practice, like normally because he was black. So he had to like kind of do the, the, um, you know, uh, like it's to be the black market uh, medical trade so it's very interesting this issue was a little like uh the other well i'll say the other two issues were more exciting this one was more like okay we're gonna like break and give you some more story and stuff a couple like there was a couple flashbacks to like uh childhood and stuff so, uh, the dad's childhood so or the grandpa's childhood so it was a little like okay i wish i kind of wanted to know more about the al capone stuff less about his childhood but you know they're giving you like fleshing out of character so i thought it was good just had, wasn't as good as the last couple issues so uh i'm gonna give that one a 3.5 because i really do like the story i don't want to see what happens but just this specific issue didn't really push it that much the next one i read was nuclear family number three uh that one's by stephanie phillips uh and uh recently i've kind of been reading her stuff uh i'm liking it a lot she um she is telling this story that 
I have no idea where it's where it's going. Like, and I enjoy that. Like, I kind of want you as a, a writer to take me on this journey uh, for something that's indie like this. Uh, just from the name, you're like, okay, obviously it's got to do with nuclear stuff. Uh, but like at first it starts in the fifties in issue one, then issue two was like, no, we're like, we're cutting ahead to some like, uh, post-apocalyptic future in the seventies that didn't happen. So it's like an alternate timeline. And then, uh, the, this issue, issue three was like, uh, like, um, we're going to continue in that storyline where the, this new government that's set up is, uh, is after the blast, I guess, in America, like you know the russians launched nukes and the americans are like super anti-communist and they think that this family that just appeared out of nowhere that apparently trans transported through some wormhole or something when the blast went off in the 50s to this alternate reality uh they think that they're communists so they're like torturing them and questioning them and all this crazy stuff so it was very interesting very cool uh i'm i'm on board with this that was a solid four to me as well the last one i read was fear case number four uh fear case has been an interesting uh book it's it's basically like i think i've described it as it follows and the ring and those kind of ideas where something evil is passed you have to pass on something evil to someone else or it will kill you kind of thing so in this one there's a box literally a case that uh if it's passed to you you have to give it to someone you hate or you and someone you love will die um and so uh we're finally i think this is this must be a mini series because it doesn't say it's like four out of five or anything but this issue four was uh you know it was it was i don't want to spoil too much but it was definitely like oh we're we're wrapping up this storyline a little bit at least with these two characters that we've been following for these two black detectives that uh have are the most recent detectives to get on this uh this uh case this unsolved case of this like weird box or case that has been murdering people and so they've been looking for it and they finally find it and when they find it uh as you could imagine maybe it doesn't end so well so so or it doesn't end uh in a very good manner for at least some of them so so uh yeah that's that's pretty much it for all the issues i read that one i'm gonna give uh i'm gonna give that one a 3.5 we'll move along to the uh collections that i read so first things first i promise you guys i would talk about bone uh i finished this big fat tome uh it was fantastic it was one of the best little fantasy comics i've ever read uh i see now why it has such uh acclaim you know through the industry uh i just i loved it i i can't recommend this more it is the nice little tale about this character bone here who uh him and his cousins get transported uh, they get lost and then they get uh, not transported, but they walk into this valley. And in this valley, there's all this stuff that's going on. There's uh, rat creatures that are attacking the people that live there. There's an evil lord that's trying to rise. There's a, pr a queen and a princess and all this stuff that, uh, you know, are uh, tangled up in this like history. Uh, like, you know, it's kind of like Middle Earth where, you know, uh, in the old days, Saron did this and then he fell and then now there's this now he's trying to rise again kind of thing that's kind of what happened in this so we get this whole mythology about dragons and you know how how the valley was created and all this stuff it is pretty interesting I really really liked it I would recommend this book to pretty much anybody it is all ages so you know your kids can read it um, or you can read it to your kids and uh, this is the black and white version because this one is like 40 bucks but you know you get it's all black and white uh but it's definitely uh very good art in this you know jeff smith really knocks it out of the park as far as storytelling and art um and i could like i said i can see why this is so good uh, i think i believe last time i had like about 200 pages left and i was like well i'm gonna give this one a five unless for some reason it flubs the ending and it totally didn't flub the ending it it like completed all the you know loose ends that you know, or all the things you wanted to be uh completed all the all the little story points that it had set up it totally 
completed all those and then um it ends it in a very nice way in a very like uh, satisfying way and uh and yeah i just feel like this was really really solid really good and i get now why everybody says this is like a masterpiece so uh definitely check this one out um this is the black and white like i said and even if i think this one is like 45 bucks like on the cover but you can get it on amazon for like 25 30 dollars sometimes so it's cheaper than buying the individual books from scholastic which are the colored ones i believe those ones are ten dollars a piece so um yeah or maybe more now i'm not sure but yeah the, and there's 10 i think volumes in here so uh that would be like a hundred bucks of the scholastic ones versus you know 25 or 30 bucks of the black and white one so uh really really like this series highly recommended five five for me five stars out of five um then i read this book here miracle man volume two this is called the red king syndrome this is alan moore uh writing uh, a superhero book which doesn't happen that often um and uh i believe i think the artist on this was like gary ridgeway and then, then a couple other people but this book was surprising how good it was i mean this is quickly becoming one of my favorite comics volume one was solid it was kind of like i thought of it more like this because this is from like 1982 i believe or like early 80s and i was kind of thinking like okay this is alan moore's like first step in kind of subverting superhero genre so it's gonna have things that have already been done now in the in the meantime you know like he's already written better stuff or better versions of this since then that i've read so like this is going to be kind of like the prototype and uh, i was wrong uh, the the first volume was very much like that where it was setting up stuff and i thought okay i could see where this is like subversive for the time but since you know the time it's, it's the future now he's written more subversive stuff and it's is definitely uh, uh you know it's good but it's not like the best thing i've ever read this this book really changed that this one really expanded on a bunch of ideas i don't think i've ever seen in like a superhero book before uh i mean i haven't read every alan moore superhero thing like supreme i haven't read by him a couple of the other like indie stuff but i mean this was a unique thing i, I don't think i've ever read a book like this there's i mean it's i will say this it's super graphic not just violence but there's like a birthing scene in this book which i've never seen in a comic he literally gives birth to a child in this not him personally but his girlfriend gives birth to his child and they show everything i was very like what the hell and so, <laughs> so was not expecting that so it is quite graphic in that sense uh there is a lot of blood and gore in it as well it's very violent um but like the just the ideas that are in this book are are quite interesting and different than anything else i've read i think um so yeah this one is definitely a check out it is a little pricey i think each each of these books are like 35 bucks uh and they don't seem like they're that thick but because it's alan moore i think you're getting like four issues in each of these and it takes you a while to read because it's alan moore if you really want to get through it and then they have like all the back art for like each issue and like i don't know they have like the pencils and everything so you get to see a lot of stuff but this one is basically just continuing uh from the last one and the last one was kind of set up like here's miracle man reborn in the 80s and you know him kind of relearning how to live life then this one is like okay now his villain knows he is now back his like hedge villain or whatever his main main arch nemesis so they come head to head and we find out more about his origin how he got made like what he is exactly and uh and yeah like it's i don't know it's pretty crazy it's pretty cool i really really like this pick it up this is a five for sure and i didn't think i was it was going to be that kind of groundbreaking and it still is groundbreaking I, I don't like i said i don't think i've seen a comic quite like this before uh so and that's saying something because i've read a lot of superhero stuff so and a lot of alan moore stuff too so 
uh, this Eclipse is, is by Eclipse who did this and then Marvel reprinted it because they got the rights now. So this is really good. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Marvel didn't censor this because uh, they would do that. So, so um, there must have been something where they were like, we promise we won't do that. So, uh, but it's really good. Uh, definitely pick these up if you can. Uh, then I finally got around to finishing up uh, Hip Hop Family Tree Volume 2. Uh, this one was just as good as the first one. Ed Piscor uh, really knocks it out of the park as far as this history is concerned. Um, he really, like, you can just tell he loves this uh, art, this, this music genre, and he wants to tell the entire story. He does a really good job of condensing a lot of information into, you know, a 100-page book. This is 100 pages each one of these is 100 pages and he does a fantastic job and basically that's four comics i guess right so i mean he's he's killing it as far as all that is concerned and then the best thing about this i think and really cool that he does this in the back he has the discography for all the music that he references so you can go and listen to everything that he talks about through this and uh and it's very cool but this one is the the history between 1981 and 1983 so this has a lot of stuff that i actually knew or like was aware of uh as far as the bands and stuff i, I knew more of these names than i did in the first one uh this one had like you know run dmc's history and rick rubin and where he came from and uh the beastie boys and things like that so uh, you saw a little public enemy stuff so it was it was cool it was very interesting to see um that history come from the 70s stuff and then now i really want to read the other ones um but uh i'm gonna take a break a little bit because this is this is a lot of information so um these ones while they're really really good and the art's really good there's just a lot of information so it does uh you know you got to be in the mood to kind of read that much information all at once so that is what i read in april uh and now we're gonna go to what i'm gonna read in uh in may first things first i have been inspired by the uh, invincible show to reread and read more of the invincible book so i got this first volume compendium uh of invincible it is issues zero through 47 of invincible and then i think there's a couple like oh yeah it says uh there's a there's a an issue from the summer special as well so uh couple extra issues in there but yeah basically it's the first 47 issues of invincible uh as you can see i've already started reading it i am i don't know about 15 issues into it so or 18 issues into it actually and uh yeah so working my way through it it's fantastic uh if you haven't watched the show go watch the show it's awesome if you haven't read the comic go read the comic it's awesome um this book is one of my favorite books it's by robert kirkman who you might know from the walking dead fame he he's gotten the last couple years uh he wrote that series along with this in the 2000s uh this came first actually this is his superhero book then he wrote the walking dead which was his zombie book and both are fucking fantastic and both should be read by everybody so um yeah reading this one uh hopefully that one will get finished fairly fast because it's a pretty quick read robert kirkman does a really good job of making them uh go quickly so uh like a lot of, a lot of stuff happens it's enjoyable and it's fast reading so i enjoyed that uh then i'm gonna try to read berserk volume two uh i enjoyed volume one so i figured might as well pick up volume two and see how that goes um uh, I'm intrigued to see where this goes because this story jumps around a bit so uh, like it's it, the first volume had like pretty much the same timeline for a minute like for, for a good like 90% of it and then the last issue or the last story arc of it went to Guts's past so it was like him as a kid and I think that this picks up with him as a kid more so i guess we're going to learn more about you know his past and what happened with him and how he came to be this demon fighter and whatnot so uh we'll see how that is and then um i also wanted to continue reading vinland saga this is number two 
of the Vinland Saga hardcover book. So I think this actually collects, uh, if you're reading the mangas, like the actual soft covers, this is three and four. The one I read before was numbers one and two, but I guess in these hardcovers, they're putting two together in one like uh, kind of big one. So this uh, is a book by, um, what is her name? Uh, Makoto uh, Yukimura. So, or actually, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a man or a woman, but uh, I really like this series. Uh, it's about Vikings and who the fuck doesn't like Vikings? And apparently it's very historically accurate. So uh, I, I appreciate the Viking stuff and it seemed very cool. Uh, and I like the first volume a lot. So I'm gonna check this out. Uh, this one should be a quick read as well because these manga volumes kind of blow through because there's a lot of fighting, not so much talking, at least in these two in Berserk and this one. So uh, you can get through a lot. So, uh, and I'm looking forward to that one. So then the next one, is another manga that's got more manga i don't know if you noticed but got more manga nowadays trying to dip my toe into just throw myself into that pool trying to get uh, accustomed to you know this this other genre of comics that i haven't really looked at before so uh but i'm i'm, I'm working my way through a bunch of these cool books that i've found uh one of them is going to be this one i think it's called gyo or gyo uh, don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but it's by Junji Ito, who is a horror, specifically horror comic writer or manga writer. Um, apparently, you know, he's got like three of these books that are like nice hardcovers and I bought them all. So I figured I'd start with the smaller one <laughs> and uh, work my way up. And this one looks fucking crazy. I don't know, but the artwork looks insane. I don't know what it's about. There's, I know there's like, body horror stuff in it there's a lot of like crazy weird like uh killer fish or something <laughs> i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure it looks like like it looks like the thing like a uh, very thing inspired like something a parasite is taking over like uh bodies of things and then like sprouting legs and stuff so it, to me it's it's a lot like the thing you know same thing fish have some kind of weird parasite that grows out of them um so yeah it seems very cool uh i wanted to check that out because it seemed up my alley especially i'm a big horror movie fan so you know the thing i love that movie john carpenter is fantastic so um gonna check that one out for sure and then last but not least you got this big fat book that just came out by barry windsor smith called monsters and this, uh, I looked, I had already been aware of it because I'm a big fan of Barry Windsor Smith. Uh, ever since me and John did uh, the Weapon X uh, episode of our podcast, um, this Barry Windsor Smith has been on my radar because of that, basically. So I went to look up stuff that he had coming out or the stuff that he had done that was still in print. And this book was coming out about six months ago. It had it, you know, pre you know, you could pre-order it. So I did. And uh, yeah, this book looks crazy. It looks super dense and interesting. Uh, from what I understand, it looks like a big story of trauma about one dude's life. But the art is fucking fantastic. There's some crazy stuff going on. Um, it looks like there's just this uh, story about a boy and like his the trauma that happened to him as a child and uh like with his abusive father and just crazy shit that happens uh in his life so um i can't wait to read this although it is pretty thick it's about 350 pages and it looked pretty wordy so <laughs> so i am interested to dig in but i'll probably finish these other ones first maybe just to, to uh burn through a couple of them so I don't get bogged down too much with that one, but I really want to get into that. Um, yeah, and those are pretty much what I'm reading this <laughs> this month. It looks like I'm going to be all full up of a lot of stuff. So uh, we'll see if I get through all of them. Uh, if not, they'll just continue into the next month. So uh, once again, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, comment down below. What are you guys reading? Have you guys heard of these books? 
Do you recommend them? What did you think about them? Uh, did you read any of the issues that I read? What did you think about those? Um, yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm always interested to see what you guys think. So uh, with that said, uh, I'll see you on the next review.